Hey everyone, welcome to Free Tutorial Friday and um, this week and probably the same for the coming weeks. These are going to be a little bit briefer because I am hard at work on finishing the How to Draw book with Thomas Bartling and we're working every day until it's done. So I've uh, only got a bit of time each week to uh, record a little something. So I'm um, sticking with traditional media this week and since I'm in the throes of doing the uh, How to Draw Environments chapter in the book, I decided to stay with that. And so there's a lot of this sort of stuff happening in the chapter, of course, in much more detail and, um, you know, with many more examples. But this is the sort of thing that we're doing. This is a simple one-point perspective. And actually, it's going to turn into a couple of points here in a few minutes. But uh, we're starting with a one-point perspective. So you can see I blocked out a little frame. I am using sort of the rule of thirds for my composition. So you see those little tick marks on the left side and the bottom. And so it's just dividing it into thirds on each side, and then it helps me to place uh, my objects, which I'm going to put a little building in here. So I've just uh, sketched in a horizon line. I picked a vanishing point, um, putting in some clouds. So, um, and this is a graphite pencil on, I think, just marker paper or something. And this video is also sped up about 200% uh, uh, roughly. And um, I like working with graphite because it's it's definitely the most versatile tool, um, and then you can you know use the side of the pencil and put down some value, or you can tip it up and use it in your sort of writing, uh, handheld writing position and do details like that. And so now I'm just going to put in a building here, and so you'll see this is all pretty loose. And the thing I like to do with graphite, you'll see here in a few minutes, um, is you know, because it is so versatile and it's easy to erase, it's nice to be able to do that. So a lot of times I will just um, do exactly that. I'll rough in a composition um, and direction and then sort of smear it out and erase out bits and pieces and then detail it again. So see, I just picked a left vanishing point out there on the horizon. So I wanted this building, this bridge sort of structure between these two towers to come towards us a little bit, um, sort of at an angle as opposed to coming directly towards us um, and hiding that tower. I wanted it to go at a bit of an angle. And so instead of picking the original vanishing point, I went off there to the horizon to the left, picked another vanishing point, and that's now the angle that that's coming towards us. Um, you also see I'm putting a few little contour lines in the foreground here, and those are just trying to reinforce that one point perspective of our landscape. And there's a couple little, you know, overlapping rolling hills occluding each other, right, overlapping, and that helps us, that helps give us a sense of depth, because this is not going to be a true value sketch. Um, I am putting value on it, um, but it's not like I'm really picking the lighting, you know, illuminating the surfaces of the building, and figuring, doing cast shadows and that sort of stuff. It's just to give it a little bit of definition, um, mostly in the foreground, to separate that from the middle ground. So you can see, and that's the nice thing about using the pencil, just tip it on the side, scruff in a bit of value and that helps it be in the foreground right because of the atmospheric perspective we're so conditioned to see you know higher contrast in the foreground uh, than the background and so here I've just grabbed a little weaver pad and I like to do this a lot with the, the graphite sketches it just soften them back a bit so it has a little bit less texture of the page and you see the sketch is probably about four four or five inches in width and then come back and grab a little kneaded eraser. And so, you know, maybe that's a lighter value because it's actually the local color, like it's snowy or sandy beach kind of hill. That's actually supposed to be a little bit of water through there. Pick out a couple other little highlights and then just go back and detail a bit uh, if I was going to take this further. Really, it's just a, you know, simple little sketch as an example to drop in a horizon line. Um, and start to build out a scene. So, and then you go back and redefine your elements. And that's the really, like I said, that's the beautiful thing about graphite is you can do that over and over again and get a real richness and um, refined texture to your drawings uh, by erasing or by smearing and then working back over the top. Now they can take a little longer, of course, than sketching with something like a Sharpie pen, but they also have a richness to them. And if you keep working them and working them and working them, um, and really working the values and getting away from using all of the lines, you can start to make them look very photographic, of course. So 
uh, but that's all just a function of the time. So I just put a little round rock over there in the distance and I did a quick reflection of it in the water and here I'm reflecting that building a bit into that little lake behind those three rocks in the foreground and just adding a couple little details to that structure continuing the structure up onto that ridge a bit and a couple little contour lines to indicate the there's a little cliff there up, up the top part of that hill a couple of buildings way off in the distance and that's that's sort of about it for doing a really quick um, little graphite sketch and a few more details and the next thing I'm going to do is um, whenever you're doing environments and uh, architecture and things like that we always want to in fact whenever you look at any image people always look for humans first so I'm taking a piece of tracing paper and I'm going to overlay here the structure of this drawing so here's the horizon line and right here's the frame so what I'm going to do is just talk about putting uh, figures into this landscape. So there was my vanishing point I used. Typically if we had a picture and we had taken a picture with a camera, the vanishing point for the horizon would always be dead center um, for just a broad grid that covered like, you know, fields and things like that. Uh, but you can put it wherever you want, say that we had, you know, uh, a grid and, and fields with lines in them that went in a different direction than the camera we were shooting. We weren't standing directly, you know, at the end of that field, the VP could be off to the side. Um, I'm sticking with that original, even though I'm not really using those kind of lines so much. Um, I have a little bit of a hill here. It's these kind of contour lines, and I'm trying to give that sense. I'm looking at my guidelines, and I'm bending those, but I'm trying to indicate a hill going down, and then behind that hill is this little lake. There was that building, and then there was another hill there, and then I had another vanishing point here off to the left and that was for that bridge structure so there that's my new horizontal that's parallel to the ground plane so it's coming towards us a little bit right but not as much as the first vanishing point that I picked and a little cast shadow another hill okay now this thing about looking for humans is that whenever we um, people look at a landscape um, or any actually any picture they look for the humans first so the humans are the great thing for scale. So what I want to do here is uh, start to add some figures to this, and I'll show you how to do that with the vanishing points. So that's the basic structure, and I got rid of the graphite sketch underneath. So if that was the size of a human in the distance, you go back to your original vanishing point, I bring it to the edge of the lake, right behind this hill, and then bring it up the hill. And so what I did there is I put a vanishing point directly below my original vanishing point, and that's like a ramp, an inclined plane, and I brought them up to the top of the hill, and then I brought them further into the foreground. And then I took them up the sideways up the hill, and then I'm going to bring them down the hill. And so you can see I'm just moving this height line around my image over and over again. And if I went back into the distance, there would be the height line, and those would be the people, like three people standing on the side of the lake there. And when you get back to there along the bridge, they would just be dots. So if I wanted to extend this scene and bring the height of a person closer, what I would do is just slide them over sideways, run a guideline through the bottom of the height line and one through the top, and that's what the height of a figure would be in the foreground. And of course he's being cropped, but that's how you'd figure out the size of the head and shoulders, right, even though it's cropped. And I could bring another one over here. So you see it's just moving this height line around this scene over and over. And that's how you do it. And we'll do the same on this one. So this is how I start most of my um, environment sketches, and most of my sketches in general actually. Start with a really light marker. Again rule of thirds, this time instead of the horizon being low, I'm putting the horizon high. And I start out by laying in a perspective grid. Okay, you can see I just centered it there, much like if you snapped a picture and you didn't have anything in that landscape yet, that would be basically the grid you would have. And I have actually three vanishing points in this one. And what I'm doing is I'm using those to zigzag a line. So there's a line that comes from the vanishing point of the horizon towards us. And then I'm going to the far left and I'm pulling that further forward with the, my left VP. And then I went out to the right and I pulled it even further forward. So there's kind of this zigzag line on the ground plane. And I'm blocking in a couple of big uh, cliffs, maybe some structures there. 
and I'm thinking I'm going to do a little bit of water on the left and right and this zigzag pattern is going to be the um, the guide for a little zigzagging landmass like a little you know peninsula between these two ponds and put a little value in the sky a little value on the water and there's gonna be the height of a person and you can see their heads not right on the horizon which means um, we're not standing in the scene with them we're actually above them a little bit because their heads are below the horizon line if their heads were on the horizon line it would be like we were standing in the scene with them and what I did was I just moved that height line down that little strip of land using my right VP so diagonally then diagonally diagonally to the left etc and so here's just a little quick silhouette of a person and I want to use that as a guide and pull that into the distance and then I'm going to go diagonally off to that right VP okay and I'm going to scale them off into the distance and going forward there so there's the height there then I'm going to go back to the left so see I'm zigzagging this height line all the way through my scene and then if you wanted that's how you could place the same height individual in this case throughout your scene and then that's where it was cropped so there's my original VP1 there's my VP2 right which was the middle zigzaggy line and then there's my VP3 which brought them further forward towards me but also on an angle and now I'm going to define a couple little islands and the edge of that landmass and here's the other side of it and maybe it cuts in there with a little puddle okay and then off into the distance like so and I'm going to put there's some sort of structure sticking out of the water and then again I can do the same with that height line if I wanted it to be the exact same height I could pull it forward there's a little reflection of that I'm going to put a little cliff or a wall something over there and then the reflection of that so just flip it upside down on itself that's the reflection um, I should actually add the reflection of the person there but I forgot that um, it's all right for this quick sketch um, it's not like I'll use this one for anything except for this week's uh, tutorial Oh, by the way, thanks to everybody who sent me a couple little, you know, emails and things on Facebook that you went and bought a book. Huge help. So, uh, most appreciated. All right, let's block in a little value for the water, just so graphically we can see the uh, land mass a little bit better. Here we go. And we're almost done for this week. So, again, like I said, we're really, uh, Thomas and I are trying to work every day until the uh, How to Draw book is done. And uh, so the free tutorial Fridays are going to be a bit brief for the next probably three weeks, but I will try to keep posting them. Uh, it's difficult to find the time, but I enjoy doing them, and I hope you guys are enjoying watching them. So there's a little sky value. Just so graphically, right, we can see our scene a little bit better. And again, Copic markers, a little Sharpie um, for the fine black lines. And just adding a bit of value there so we can see our guys. And of course, sci fi guys always carry around some magical stick. And that's it. Uh, have a great week.